I tried to beat every level of the Splatoon 2 Hero Mode without taking damage. To lay out the rules, if I get hit, step in enemy ink, or fall into the void, I have to restart the current stage from the beginning and no checkpoints and levels do not count. With that out of the way, I created a fresh profile, booted up the game, and actively made my way over to Marie where we unwillingly joined the new Squid Beak Splatoon as Agent 4. The challenge had begun. Going into the first stage, something I didn't remember that was immediately obvious was the abysmal fire rate of the main gun, the hero shot. Suffice to say, it was painfully slow. But I had a big brain strategy to not take damage. All I had to do was get this, avoid enemy shots. I mean, look how slow they uh, are. F Luckily, I wasn't stuck with only the hero shot, as from the start of the game, the gods blessed us with splat bombs as a sub weapon. So combining those with the secret technique of stealth allows me to deal with most of the Octarians without provoking or getting close to them. And once I realized this, I ran through the stage faster than a college student who was late for their final exam, rained down missiles putting the Octarians out of their misery, and body slammed the Zapfish as I finished the first stage of the challenge. For most of stage two, if you know how to move the joystick, use cover, and the bomb bit strategy, then this stage won't be much of an issue. Keywords most of and much, as at the very end of the stage, they introduce a new enemy, this guy. And there are multiple issues here. One, he's off the ground so bomb bitch doesn't work. Two, there's almost no cover while it has the high ground. And three, it spits out bombs that have RNG splash damage. So it was essentially destined to be sent back to the beginning, except for the fact that I was wrong and bombs do apparently rip. And so without any problems whatsoever, none at all, the Zatfish gets body slammed and we move on to stage three. Where about the first three quarters wasn't too hard. But like all great plot twists, they decide to throw another new enemy into the mix who spawns in the air, has 100% random shots, and outranges my hero shot. Facing it head on didn't work so what did i do immediately afterwards run it back obviously my pride was on the line you okay switch strategies maybe like like what, what am i supposed to do except just wait for it to stop moving well uh that solution was easier than anticipated the boss of world one toaster boy is very different from the regular stages as there is no cover to hide behind but there aren't any enemies to shoot at me either the first two phases are simple enough avoid the bread climb and clutch the tentacle where this fight gets tough is the third phase because of this extremely long splash wall that covers the entire arena this phase of the fight is mainly about turf management as toaster lad can cover the ground extremely quickly while i can't do that you see how slowly this weapon fires anyway the reason it's a problem isn't because i can't avoid it if that was the problem this video wouldn't exist it's because when you destroy the tentacle at the top, you jump to the exact opposite point on the other side of the arena, regardless of the direction you're facing. And if that spot even has a speck of ink, let alone enough to fill a bathtub, I will take damage before the final cutscene starts. So how do you deal with this? Well, like all useful things, the answer lies in the accidental discovery of new information. If I can cause them to keep rotating, wait, 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 wait. it won't cover as much turf. Oh my god, that's the secret! I just make it so he doesn't go all the way around. You can actually outrun Toaster Dude's wall, and because it's programmed to turn in the direction that's the shortest distance, I can manipulate its turn so the arena can be clear for landing. All that's left now is the execution. The execution of the trick, and the execution of old Toaster Chap over here. Yes! Let's go! Goodbye, Toaster Strudel, and good riddance! With World 1 completed and terrorism retreated, we jump to World 2, where instead of a simple three stages complete, bam, double it, we got six more. Starting with Stage 4, the devs decided to introduce a new gimmick, where for each stage from this point onwards, children will request a weapon for us to use at gunpoint. So stages will typically be built around a specific weapon, generally making them harder than other weapons on that stage. But going back to Stage 4, we get introduced to the Hero Roller, which acts exactly as the Vanilla Spat Roller in multiplayer. The stage itself isn't too hard. Only thing to note is that for roller stages in the future, killing enemies is a risk because of the extremely limited range. Range. Other than that, it was a matter of slapping, flicking, and rolling my way to body slam the zapfish. Next up was stage 5, where we get introduced to the Hero Duelies, a weapon that can perform two dodge rolls. More like two times the chance of me rolling off the stage, not like that happened at any point, or almost did, not at all. Again, the stage was quite simple, except for this one scare at the very end to the final launch pad, where I almost dodge rolled off the edge, and by some miracle avoided all of their painted spots on that same platform, managing to body slam the zapfish and moving on to stage 6. Here we're introduced to the last new weapon of this world, the Hero Charger. This is by far the most useful weapon in this run. It has incredible range compared to any other weapon we get access to during the entire hero mode, meaning that I can kill enemies from pretty far away, minimizing the risk of getting hit. And unless my brain gets overwhelmed, I'm just disappointed. Then all it takes is releasing the trigger for them to be sent to the Shadow Realm. Stages 7 and 8 had us using the hero shot once again, but they weren't a problem. Stage 9 introduces another gimmick that will be reoccurring throughout the rest of the game. One stage per world, from here on out, we will have a stage taking place on one of the multiplayer maps, and to clear the stage, we have to collect 8 mini zapfish scattered around. Simple enough. But where the challenge comes in is that the stage is infested with Octolings, who can use the same weapons as the player, including bombs, super jump to prefix points on the map, can hide in ink, and can cover turf very quickly. Luckily, the mini zapfish can be seen with their beams of light, so we're not completely in the dark here as to where they are. But even so, dealing with the Octolings is difficult because of their unpredictability. Because of their bombs. Because of their 
existence? The point I'm trying to get across is that this stage was hard, and obviously my cautious running around wasn't working. So I thought outside the box, quite literally, and exited the stage. Something I've refrained from mentioning is that after we beat World 1, we actually unlocked the ability to use this Enhancifier, which allows upgrading of any unlocked weapon, your ink tank capacity, also known as how long you can shoot, and you can purchase two other types of bombs, one being the curling bomb and the other being the auto bomb. Now my problem is that I can't deal with the unpredictability of the octoling, so the solution is to eliminate that same thing using the auto bombs because it targets the closest enemy, walks up to them, and detonates. And because of the odd way octolings are programmed, it's like a 50-50 to whether or not they'll even react to the bomb being right next to them. So with auto bomb bitch now in hand, I returned to the reef and immediately put my new strategy to work. Now it was about finding the optimal route where I could collect the 8 sapphish while encountering the easiest enemies to deal with based on my positioning. Of course, I definitely still died a few times trying to figure out where to go, but I managed to find the route that got me right before the final zapfish. The octolings spawn in there spawned, so I was deathly afraid that if I gunned it for the final zapfish, I'd get hit. But I didn't have much of a choice, to be honest, so I covered as much turf as possible and said fuck it. <laughs> The boss of World 2, the Japanese Archipelago, is equipped with an oversized roller that sometimes functions as a motorbike. This fight is mainly a test of mobility, spatial awareness, and pure persistence, as unlike Toaster Boy, you can actually get hit by its multitude of attacks extremely easily. My initial strategy was to stay as far away as possible while lobbing bombs at its feet to stay out of range, but I quickly realized that didn't work as it was difficult to stay out of the range since the Japanese Archipelago constantly moves towards you, let alone it being a slog to do since it was so slow and tedious. Obviously, I needed a new strategy, so instead of playing defensively, how about an all out offensive, taking advantage of the attack's wind-up times. Ultimately, what makes this strategy work is if you deal enough damage, the Japanese archipelago will stagger backwards and back off, giving me time to paint the immediate vicinity, rinse and repeat making sure to dodge the motorbike attacks, and keeping in mind where the landing point is. We'll get past the first two phases pretty consistently. Phase 3 adds one new attack that propels three thin high-speed slashes across the entire arena. This one move got me a bit more than I'd like to admit. No, I thought he was going to do- no, why did I back into it? I'm so stupid! Yeah, Sheldon, I understand you could really use some data on this one, but I need some data on why you keep bothering me! No! I moved too slowly! That was so close! Oh, and did I forget to mention that the motorbike attack now zooms across the arena twice? No! I, he thought he went... Oh, my God. Anyway, the strategy is there. All that's left is the execution. Please! Let's go! And with the defeat of the Japanese archipelago, we leave Japan so they can eventually create the blockbusters of the modern era. World 3 Stage 10 introduces the Hero Slosher, a weapon that can fire over and on top of walls. Not super significant in this challenge, but it has decent range so it could be worse. The stage is based around avoiding and being spotted by these big lads. Not much to say about it, keep the cycles in mind, get to the end, and body slam the zapfish. Now Stage 11 on the other hand, oh boy. This stage introduces yet another new enemy, the Rat. Their quirky gimmick is that they actively run away from you and drop splat bombs when startled. I'm just gonna play this completely unrelated sped up footage. Can you tell I still harbor resentment for the stage? The gimmick at play here is that you have to chase the rats to obtain keys that are required to progress to the next part of the stage. Auto Bombage was my best friend here, as it allowed me to manipulate how the rats move since in this stage they have set paths they follow to run away. Think of it like a set of invisible rails that I know the layout of from trial and error. The first and second sections weren't bad, but where I started to struggle was right here at this donut grate. You have two rats running around on top and only one of them has the key to the launch pad. My strat was to use Auto Bombage to lure them to the front side where I could kill them from down below. But the issues here are 1. The bomb's immediate explosion, 2. The RNG splash damage from the same bombs landing on me, and 3. Not being able to kill them before they run away. Okay, that last one might just be a skill issue, but, but the other two are still very definitely 100% apply. And by some miracle, I managed to avoid getting hit by the splash damage, and then got hit immediately afterwards. You you mother- Okay. <laughs> so now I have to do that again. And again. And again. In my maddening spiral, I realized I could play duck and cover on the top platform as they no longer have the high ground, which ended up being a better strategy overall. The next time I made it past, I made it to the final section where all you have to do is chase this one little rat and... Oh. Yep. I have to find one of these two rats that have the keys while all the other ones are running around dropping bombs. The typical way to corner them is to funnel them up these ramps to the highest point where they'll jump back down giving me a chance to throw a bomb. Which was my intended strat, but I ended up trapping three to four of them in this area where there's only one exit. But I unnoticeably blocked the exit with Auto Bombage, and that caused them to run back and forth against the wall as they had nowhere to go. And it just so happened that one of them had a key. The key to get me out of this nightmare hellhole. I've never been more careful navigating my way around. I grabbed the key, got to the launch pad, and body slammed the non-believers. At this point, I started streaming my attempts live right here on this YouTube channel. 
Also, chat suggested that I should upgrade my abysmally slow fire rate hero shot to level 2 since the majority of stages per world I'm still using the hero shot. Stages 12, 13, and 14 were relatively easy. Only thing to mention is that stage 13 introduced the hero splatling, which is useful for the same reasons as the charger. Other than that, bounce on the bouncy things, avoid the lanky men, and like all good rich citizens, rid the world of gas powered vehicles one car at a time. Going into stage 15, it's another octoling level, this time on humpback pump track. And now, because of how painful the last one was, you'd think this would be the same, but no! Stop thinking that. Stop! You're wrong. Something I didn't realize is that these are the only stages in the game, besides the beginning, where Sheldon isn't holding you at gunpoint to gather data on a specific weapon type. This is where having the charger unlocked was another gift from the gods, since I could use it here to snipe the Octolings. So all it was reliant on was my mediocre at best aim. Which don't get me wrong, I still have to find the optimal path through the level, maybe auto bomb bitch some enemies and body slam the 8 zapfish, but it was way less tedious. The boss of world 3 temper tantrum is a straightforward fight that's made extremely easy by this lower ring area that stretches around the entire arena. Essentially, avoid the dash by jumping down to the safe area, head back up and lure it to force it to stomp, giving a safe damageless jump to the next phase. In phases 2 and 3, Baby Rage obtains Drip, so we have to get rid of it or else it's gonna look more styling than we are. Again, avoid the dash, bait out the jump, destroy the tentacle, and BAM! Th th that's such a weird way to think about it. It's like, wait. What?! Yeah, so that could apparently happen! Luckily, it was on the easiest boss fight in the run, so I picked my salty ass out of the Atlantic and ran it back one more time. That's, okay, <laughs> two more times. The stream afterwards, of course. Let's go! With Molding McGee defeated twice over, one for each brain cell, we head to World 4 Stage 16, where the gimmick here is these Octarians stuck in Wheatley's manufacturing process that we have to actively dodge. They start out with predictable patterns. Dodge left, dodge right while moving forward at all times. Not bad at all. And then someone had the fantastic idea of, yo, what if we don't have any predictable patterns so it's all based on reaction time because you know some idiot's gonna try this without taking damage, so let's make this as hard as possible for that guy specifically. This ending section is essentially unpredictable as the moving platforms and the octoballs are on a global cycle. So if you wanted to get the same pattern every time, you'd have to play exactly the same every run, which isn't feasible. So I have to react and pray that the balls are lined up in a way that I can dodge them. The one saving grace here is this gusher, which allows me time to look for a decent enough pattern to where I can get to the end of this overly long platform. Some patterns look good and then screwed me over, other times it was my own incompetence, but I eventually got one that worked and managed to body slam the Zatfish. Stage 17 wasn't anything notable, avoid shots, auto bomb bitch, and get to the end. Stage 18 on the other hand was an interesting one. It had us using the charger, which had me thinking it would be an easy stage as obviously I have a lot of range, so less of a chance of me getting hit. That is, until I reached this section where you have three separate snipers eyeing you down at a bar on a Saturday night. Running around trying to avoid them wasn't a great pickup tactic, but I needed a way to get around quickly, so I left the bar and went out of my way to purchase curling bombs. Though upon returning, I still wasn't sure how to approach, until I noticed there were a few platforms underneath where the snipers didn't notice you. This was the key, as I combined that with an idea from chat to paint and climb the walls without being noticed. And after some... What? No, a lot of trial and error, I found a route that worked. Upon landing, curling bomb to the left to drop to the platform. At the corner, aim up and you can just barely hit one of the snipers from below. Then ink these specific points on the walls in front to get around to here, where you can swim up, auto bomb bitch, and drop back down to the platform below, where you can finally ink this wall, climb up to the grate, use the wall as cover, and shoot the last one to make it to the launch pad. Here we made it to the final segment, which just so happened to be an auto scroller. After all that, it wasn't even the hardest part of the stage. This is a short auto scroller which has enemies spawn in from above. My initial strategy was to kill everything as they appeared, but the third wave of enemies are these two guys from earlier with their RNG shots, so that really wasn't an option. I then tried inking the entire platform so I could stealth my way through, but near the end they put sprinklers on both sides which covers the platform, so that wasn't an option either. The ending strat I came up with ended up combining the two approaches, as I could get through the first bit with stealth, but I had to destroy the sprinklers and snipers before they were aligned with the platform. So to execute this, I covered the entire platform including the middle sponge, hit from the first two waves, then I used the sponge as cover to shoot the two guys from wave 3. Three. Then it was a matter of keeping the sponge big as I played duck and cover while finally getting rid of the sprinklers and snipers. After that ordeal, I thoroughly deserved a break, and a break I got with stages 19, 20, and 21. Only thing to note is that stage 19 introduced the hero blaster and stage 20 introduced the hero umbrella. The boss of World 4, Rubber Ducky Man, is a boss where charger skills go to die. This fight will either be one of the easiest or hardest in the run depending on your charger skills. If you don't get the fast strats first try, you will struggle as the longer this fight goes, the bigger chance you will take damage. 
phase one to kill the support guys the easiest way is at the beginning where shower cap is near the center climb the center structure and barring any missed shots you should be able to kill all three supports and immediately go to phase two rinse and repeat the same thing except for this time kill two supports and dodge the shower attack immediately head to the closest pillar avoiding any other attacks like the charge shot splatling or missiles as it's random what it does climb that pillar shoot the other two supports and clutch the tentacle phase three gives back like a stingray so i avoided it using the curling bombs from earlier but outrunning it is also an option then as it's still hovering around the center structure shoot two supports and dodge the shower attack again head to the closest pillar avoid any attacks and shoot the last two supports and clutch the tentacle to finish it off did you notice it i took damage right here as i came up for the final snipe so i had to do that all over again i wasn't able to replicate it for the rest of that stream as i had become tilted but all you need is a good night's rest also known as a week's worth of rest to come back and get a second try oh 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 i think we're good let's go dude with evil depraved and the rubber ducky saved we move on to the final world of this challenge world 5 stage 22 introduces the final new and arguably worst weapon of the run the hero rush it has the exact problems of the roller and without a long range option like the vertical flick i mostly have to rely on bombs here the beginning went pretty smoothly kill a few guys distract with bomb bitch splash down the rat is back it has a key <laughs> I had to restart quite a few times, but replace the word few with of a no hour. and you'll understand my depravity. Eventually, I realized that running my head into a wall wasn't going to solve the problem, so Chat and I brainstormed a way to make this kill as consistent as possible. And what we came up with was to stand in the middle, wait for it to drop a bomb, auto bomb bitch to the left corner, and wait till it runs into us. And because we let it drop a bomb, there's a cooldown to when it can drop the next one, so all I had to do was kill it before that cooldown was up. The next segment is just as annoying as you have this platform crammed with regular Octarians, including this new special one that can dodge around. I died to this a couple times, but I accidentally found the easiest strat to get rid of the dodging guy is to use the dodging mechanic against it by getting it stuck in a corner and bomb bitching it to death. Then I reach the final segment where you have two pencil lads ready and to win you have to ride the squeegee over to the zapfish. Obviously I have to kill the two of them somehow. Luckily the one in the back couldn't reach me so all I had to do was kill the closer one that was riding the other squeegee. Chat and I debated the best approach but we settled on luring the squeegee closer with bombs, backing up to avoid the shots and throwing a bomb onto the squeegee. Now the other one was simple as the devs were kind enough to give a free ink storm special which I threw to kill the other guy without me being in range of its shots. Next up were stages 23, 24, and 25, where they had us all using different weapon types, but they weren't anything to write home about. Three more to go. Stage 26 reintroduces Wheatley's manufacturing process, and is basically an even harder version of stage 16, as instead of the hero shot, we're forced to use the roller. This comes as a problem, as early on there's this rotating platform that isn't hard to cross, but the next platform you have to climb is covered in enemy ink, so I have to use the roller flick from down below to cover enough of it to cross, while the Octoballs are constantly falling down recovering it in their ink. Oh, and just as a footnote, this platform doesn't interact with ink all too well. I spent over an hour bashing my head against the wall here, making it past a few times, but dying soon afterwards, just to be sent back to the beginning to try again. This is where chat was actively testing strats alongside me to try to find any alternative to the way I was doing it. And they came up with something. Apparently, you can ink the side of the platform above, and by spamming B to climb the wall fast, you can make it up, avoiding the enemy ink entirely. The final segment has these gigantic octo balls, and you have to use these platforms to progress while also pushing the balls into the void. At the very end, you have these Octarians, and in another universe, I died to them. But in this universe, I lured them out to be crushed by the balls, allowing me to safely body slam the zapfish. Two more to go. Stage 27 is another octoling stage on Muscle Forge Fitness. Same as the others, auto bomb bitch, snipes, and body slam the eight zapfish. One more to go. The final boss of World 5 and the final boss of Splatoon 2 Damageless is DJ Octavio. We're forced to use the Hero Shot, which is the perfect weapon for this boss. It is adequate turfing ability and I can defend myself because of the good fire rate at level 2. The general way this fight goes is that there are a handful of attacks Octavio can do, but they come out at random. The most important thing here is making sure you have space to move by forcing Octavio to be near the edge as he'll try to be a certain distance away from the player. Phase 1, depending on what attack he does, shoot it back or avoid it and recover the ground as making sure you have space to move here is crucial. Rinse and repeat, hit back the fist eight times to knock Octavio out of his mech and return to sender. Phase two, again avoid his attacks while forcing him to be near the edge so you have space to move, specifically from the suction bomb attacks. Hit him eight times and commence phase three. Again, again, rinse and repeat, hitting him eight times, watching out for the splat and suction bomb attacks and send him to the moon. And with that, phase four has us picking up a modified version of the Rainmaker and taking a victory lap high above the arena. For the last time, I jumped over the unrepellable punches, hit him back eight times for all the pain and time these stages have cost me and slammed the Rainmaker down, officially beating the Splatoon 2 hero mode without taking damage.